one then. Okay, good morning. Uh, this is a meeting of the screening subcommittee of the for the IEB director. Um, it is meeting number two. And because we are conducting this meeting virtually, I will acknowledge each of the subcommittee members by roll call. Starting with uh, Commissioner Hill. I am here, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Chief Muldrew. I am here, good morning. And we have joining us today for presentations, uh, Troop D. Banda, who is our human resources manager. Here. Thank and you. we also have counsel from Anderson and Krieger, Mina McCarries. Good morning, Mina. Good morning, Mr. Skinner. Okay, so um, we will start with item number two on the agenda, the meeting minutes from our very first meeting, October 17th, 2023. Um, Chief Muldrew, Commissioner Hill, have you had a chance to review those? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any comments, questions, edits on those? No. Good to go, Commissioner Hill. You're, on you're mute. muted if you're speaking. I think you are. I am. I'm just uh, want to do one thing before I make a motion. So bear with me one second and I apologize. No worries. Are you gearing up to make some suggested edits to the minutes? No, I'm having, I don't have them in front of me, but I did read them. What was the date for them? So I can, I have to put that in the, um, the motion. October 17th. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think, I think I can use my old secretary Sorry, I thought I'd be better prepared than this. No worries. We have counsel here. Attorney yep, McCarry, if you want to, okay. Yeah, Madam Chair, I move that the commission approve the minutes from the October 17th meeting that are included in the commissioner's pack, uh, included in our packet, uh, subject to any necessary corrections for typographical errors or non-material matters. I second the motion. Thank you, Chief Muldrew. Um, okay. I will do a roll call vote. Commissioner Hill? Aye. Chief Muldrew? Aye. And I am also an aye. Thank you. All right. So moving on to um, item number three, before I turn it over to Attorney Macarius, just want to note that the IEB director uh, position is posted uh, as of November 8th, a little slightly delayed from when we were shooting for November 3rd, but I think considering um, still pretty good timing. So that's posted. Um, we'll have uh, Troop D later in the meeting discuss the hiring process, the recruitment process, um, but just want to acknowledge that the right now, it's, as far as I can tell, the job is posted on the commission's website and it is also posted in uh, one of the, uh, I believe it's a government publication master list. So um, looking forward to hearing more about um, the efforts of our human resources division and getting that word out on that posting. All right, Attorney Macarius. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. You've heard me say uh, a lot of this in open session already, but I, I think the, the goal for the starting point was to just uh, provide a few reminders about some of the options available to you as you go into the screening process. 
Um, I want to, I guess, reiterate the first major point here is that um, there is great flexibility in how you do this this job, and it is an often an iterative process. Um, as you see the pool of candidates, as you as you start going through them, etc. Uh, the purpose of the screening committee, the only sort of real boundaries that come in from the open, really come in from the open meeting law in this case. Um, and that is that you um, limit your discussion of the process you will use uh, to open session. Um, so that's why we're in open session today. Uh, you may go into executive session to discuss the process, excuse me, the uh, individual candidates. Um, the, the purpose for the exemption is really to protect uh, both the identity of the candidates, some of whom may not be ready to let the public at large know that they're looking for new employment or, or employment with the commission if they're not currently employed. Um, and uh, also to protect the, in, in the same vein, the commission's ability to attract top quality candidates who aren't worried about that, who might not otherwise put their name in the ring. Um, once you're in executive session, you may talk about and I know you don't have any plan today. You may talk about the candidates. You may talk about uh, whether the pool is sufficient, you know, as, as you have it. Uh, we would we will continue to be part of those sessions. Um, we are somebody from from legal in, in most for any session and to help uh, answer questions about when it's appropriate to stay in executive session or where a topic may need to be picked back up in in public session. Uh, an individual question about how to approach a particular por uh, portion of someone's background or resume is is fine to discuss in executive session that's not sort of general process but you know to the extent we come back to bigger process questions you may end up wanting to reconvene more uh, open sessions like this um as a the other kind of big piece uh, that the attorney general's office has made clear for screening committees is that it is not your uh, job and you may not uh, pick a finalist or a recommended finalist. You can't recommend and you are expected to typically come up with at least two or more uh, folks who would then be interviewed publicly by the whole commission. Um, in, the, um, in the event that as you go through a screening, you decide it might make sense to interview folks within the screening committee first. Let's say you have a really big list of people who might make the cut and you would like to talk to some of them. Uh, you may be able to, um, I, we'd like, uh, depending on the particulars of, of where you are in the process, but you, you normally would be able to interview uh, for that preliminary screening in executive session as well. Um, again, to protect the identity of somebody who may not make that final cut um, to, for the commission um, and, and uh, interviews that are public. Um, one no. yes go ahead Chris. sorry to interrupt you what's the contingency there you said we may be able to interview in executive session what is that the, yeah on? it's so it's there I, I it's a little bit of a judgment call at at the moment of it but it is whether you're really getting you know if, if you're at a point where there's uh close to essentially a group of finalists um you know whether you, you may have to make the decision does it make more sense to have all of them sent to the commission for interviews versus having having them here uh, or if it's already public knowledge that somebody is interviewing um, that may that's unlikely to be the case here so the only reason i'm hedging is is um, uh, doggedness of legal training stuck in my brain that there's always there's always something you haven't thought of in the uh today but that might come up but there really is unlikely to be a reason if you're still in a pre-finalist stage, not to be able to interview, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem. Um, the, the, the last point I was going to make, because I know it comes up sometimes uh, for screening uh, committees like this, um, I guess I'll make sort of two two last points. Um, is One is about the process and one's about interactions outside of this. Uh, for the screening committee, um, process one question that often comes up is um what information can you consider about candidates um you know as you're doing the screening and uh, you know are you allowed to take your own personal knowledge of a person that might put their name forward or what you know publicly available information 
And I, that is something that as, as you start your discussions in executive session, we certainly can provide more guidance on in individual circumstances. There's probably, there's certainly, I'm sure Trupti and, and, and Dave have sort of H, HR best practices on that. Uh, however, just as a legal matter, there's nothing preventing you from using that information. This is not a procurement process. It's not a competitive uh, bid or, or licensing process where you might otherwise have, have limitations. Um, it's, it's really a, um, like any hiring, you have other due diligence that's been done, you can incorporate that. Um, the last thing I'll just mention briefly, and I think you, you uh, the, I think everybody who's a member of this body has dealt with this now in one form or another, are the uh, uh, interactions outside of this. There are only three of you, so it does make things difficult to convey any, any information, certainly without at least worrying about the open meeting law. Uh, you can, uh, convey, uh, staff can convey information to all three of you, uh, being Dave, uh, Dave, Commissioner Skinner and, and Commissioner Hill. Um, so can counsel. However, we also have to be careful about not uh, inadvertently carrying the opinion of one person to another. Uh, should questions arise, Gupti and I have talked about this, um, we'll, we'll make sure we're, we're um, you know, communicating to, to be on the safe side of that. Uh, but um, again, to reiterate, you know, we will take take issues and questions as they come up, and I think we'll all uh, get through this and in, in a in a as efficient as a as a manner as possible. That's all I have, unless there are questions. But. So I have just a, an observation, I guess. It, it um, appears that you've really only laid out one major decision point for the subcommittee, and that is whether or not to interview. Uh, candidates for advancement to the full commission for consideration, right? That's that, that's that's really your your purview. Now, obviously, there are sub decisions of that. Uh, for instance, is the pool sufficiently large? Um, do you want to ask the search firms to um, you know beat the hedges for more folks and and get more folks in in, in the pool? Um, um is the process going at the right pace etc those kinds of um so um but otherwise um yeah the, the at the end of the day that is your per, the purview of this body um as opposed to decisions about the the role it's now that the job description is posted there really isn't much you know dis difference on that mm -hmm. in our first meeting uh we talked about reserving the option to um, utilize the search firms that the commission is already engaged with in connection with the ED search. Um, so I just want to remind this, uh, us all uh, of that option. Um, it's way too early um, to even revisit that, uh, just given that um, we are not sure where we will become sure very shortly when, when Troop D is up, but we're not sure um, where the postings um, can be found now, aside from the two places I just mentioned uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so if there are no other questions, Commissioner Hill, Chief Muldrew, and uh, Troop D, you're ready. We can yeah. I have one question, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, no, uh, Nina, my question is to make sure I, this is a little different role than my other role of screening. So for me to understand, all candidates referred to the screening committee will flow through Tripti to three of us. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I think that, okay, that, that makes the most okay. sense in this case, um, David, given, given your role on the committee. All right. uh, All right. know, that's not to say that you may not have other kind of HR functions you're performing. No, I understand. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's important. Yeah. I just want to make sure I want to make sure I had a clear understanding of that. OK. Yeah. Thank and you. Chief Muldrew, I apologize. That was a decision that I made, um, but I couldn't talk to you about it, <laughs> you know, okay. given given what Attorney McCary has laid out in terms right. of the OML parameters. So, mm -hmm. um, Trupti? Okay. Um, so, as it was mentioned, the position was posted with the salary range based on the structure that we have within grade eight. 
Um, just to kind of give everyone up to speed, the salary range um, is from 130,000 to 172, grade eight, and that's where we're at. Um, the position is posted on the Commonwealth um, Employment Opportunity, which is where we post all of our positions. And in addition to that, it aggregates into, you know, other position, other job boards as well. Um, in addition to that posting, we have posted it on the master list. Um, and then uh, we also have compiled other associations and groupings um, where we're going to extend the his posting out to. And um, from a process perspective, um, I do have a list of that, which I can share with everyone in terms of where the places are, what the costs associated with it, and uh, just for full transparency that this team has an understanding of what our options are. And if there's anything that's missing, we can certainly add to that um, or if anyone has a recommendation on that. So, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Hill, go ahead. So I, I would like to see that list so that mm -hmm. we have it public. And so and if anybody ever asks us, where did this go? We can yep. answer them. And I believe, Madam Chair, that that question was asked of us at one meeting um, that we obviously had not put it out yet. Now that we have, now publicly, we can say this is where it's gone. Are you okay with that? I am completely okay with that. And um, I think and Dave. Um, we we all are. Um, we would prefer that approach. And Troop D, I don't know if you're prepared to run through that list today. Okay, yep. great. You're not I am. Um, I can actually share it if that's okay. Oh, sure. Um, do we see the list here? I see your screen. Could you make it bigger? Um, oh, it's too big. How about now? That's better. That's better. I'm sorry. Let me, how about this? Here we go. Yeah. So this kind of, this breaks down the organizations, the costs associated, where, where we are in terms of our notes. And we intend to keep this as a, you know, a reference sheet of where we posted the um, funds that we allocated to this particular posting and um, see where we yield in terms of candidates. The one thing I will share is our applicant tracking system, which is a Commonwealth mass careers. We're not able to see where, where the, from what posting we got this person through. Just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that. But this will go to show that that efforts were made to cascade a wide net um, for the posting. Troop D. Yes. You referenced the Commonwealth's uh, website um, for job postings. And you said that from there, the posting aggregates into other job boards. Mm -hmm. Such as job boards outside of the ones you have listed here and Correct. And do you know, do you know um, who those are? What those um, are? I don't know off top, top hand, but I know for a fact, like Indeed is one of them. Any that are unpaid in some instances, right? Um, I've already seen it on Indeed. Yep. So Indeed oh. aggregates from a variety of different postings uh, and their draw is to get other air, you know, other folks. We've also have the ability working with our communications department to post it on LinkedIn. Um, I was just gonna MGC. Suggest that. So that's another one that we can add to this. Um, and we'll go from here. And if, if there are any suggestions by this committee, uh, certainly um, please let me know. Or if there's any um, affinity groups or programs that you're associated with that you have connections with. Um, we always work with the hiring manager or managers um, to kind of work through their connections as well. So I do have a suggestion, um, although I'm not sure if such a forum exists. Um, law enforcement um, association, I, you know, I don't know what, how it would be referenced, but if there's anything that exists um, along those lines, then I think that would be helpful. Commissioner Hill, do you? Yep. So uh, my recommendation um, is that we reach out to the Mass Municipal Association. Mm -hmm. uh, we've at, 
if you're talking about public safety, it's the Mass Chiefs Association, Massachusetts Police Chiefs Association. Uh, there is a Massachusetts Fire Chiefs Association. And Mina, I'm, I'm going by my municipal uh, hat a few years back. I think that would hit the municipal groups. Uh, for Commissioner Hill, yes, for public safety, the Mass Chiefs ones were the ones that come to mind. There is a Mass Municipal Lawyers Association as well that uh, tend to be folks like like myself. So, um, oh, that would be that it would be good to post there as well. So you, oh, can you? We added about five additional. Yeah. Um, yeah. So can you just repeat that again, Mina? I'm sorry, Mass. Sure. Um, so Commissioner Hill mentioned the Mass Police Chiefs and Mass Fire Chiefs. Get that. Said. And then there's a Mass Municipal Lawyers Association, which is MMLA. -M -M uh, is that part of the Mass Municipal Association? No, they, no they work closely together, but it's it, it used to be called the City Solicitor Town Council Association, but that was about Gotcha. It, so, yeah. Um, Those the, would be then, the public safety ones, Nikisha. Yeah, I think that, though, though that's a good list. A handful okay. of places. If I may... Sorry, Commissioner Skinner. Just uh, if I if I may offer, I I, I didn't see it on here, but um, the a lot of the um, as you probably know, a lot of the sort of defense and criminal prosecution bar may be more involved in the Mass Bar Association. So if that's not on here, that should be reached by Mass Lawyers Weekly. But in addition to Boston Bar, the MBA might be another place to post. MBA. Yeah. Mass the Massachusetts Bar Association. A Mass Bar Association. Okay. That's helpful. And Trupti, are you willing to accept any additional suggestions offline? Yeah. So any one of the three of us, mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Hill and Chief Muldrew, can reach out to Trupti um, as we um, gain a, a better understanding of other um, organizations that we might want to post this position with. Um, so what I will do after this meeting is uh, at the very least update uh, with the suggestions that were given today um, to this list and I will send it up to the committee uh, as far as with a status update on the process. Nina, is that okay? I would suspect. Yes, it that's is. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So that way everyone's on the same page around where we are with some of these postings. Some of these do take a little while where we have to set up accounts and different things like that, but we'll continue to um to update the list and um we'll send a link to this team so that way you can just click on it and then you can just go back to the link uh every the same link every time and updates will be on there. How does that work for everybody? That's fine. I, that Madam, good. Madam Chair, I have one more suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, State Police Association of Massachusetts. Excellent. So that covers all the police and fire. Mina, I have a question of you. Sure. If I may. I had forwarded this morning, I, again, um, through um, Annie. I had forwarded a list of 20 candidates um, to be reviewed um, by Madam Chair and Commissioner Hill. I won't do that, but that has that has happened. So I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. But going forward, it will flow, originate from uh, Troop D and HR. Yeah. I, I, that's, so, that's, go ahead, Commissioner Skinner, sorry. Sorry. So, so, um, Trupti is going to get into the process a little bit more, okay, um, okay. but that's exactly right. Um, these postings, these these uh, resumes and applications should really at this point be flowing through Trupti um, to each of us on the subcommittee. Um, okay. So I, if, if you would, Chief Muldrew, please um, provide Trupti with whatever tools she needs to access these job posts, these applications, excuse me, directly. Yeah, I have them. So, I, uh, Madam Chair, before uh, Trupti does that, so I'm looking forward to the process, but I'm going to throw out an idea after her presentation and that I think we need to talk about. Okay, uh, that sounds uh, good. Um, just wrapping up 
wrapping up the, the first piece of your presentation, Tripti, I understand that you will um, be populating that spreadsheet with mm -hmm. real-time information, essentially, as to when the job is posted with each of those organizations and outlets. And then will you circulate that to um, the committee? It, will you create a SharePoint link for us yes. to access whenever? Okay, I think the, the latter- You read my mind, you read okay. my mind. So my intentions are to continue to update the existing list that I shared with you just now, just a few minutes ago. Um, and then we'll create, uh, put a SharePoint link and I will send it to this committee so everyone has access to it in real time as things change. Instead of sending multiple um, versions of it, you will have this link and you can just save it as, uh, you know, IEB director resource, posting resources. Every time you go on there, any changes myself or Natasha will make uh, when it comes to updating the posting, getting the postings out there, um, whatever it may be, um, you have real time information. How does that work for everybody? That sounds good. Okay, super. So you'll tell us a little bit more about the process, but I understand that there are, like Chief Muldrew just mentioned that there are 20 candidates already. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Um, it's been a week, a full week only. Yep. And so I think that's great. Um, yep. So what is your, what is the process that you envision for distributing uh, those resumes to this group um, and going forward? So I'm going to basically first start out with what our typical process is um, for recruiting in general um, at this stage, once we start to get resumes, and then maybe it makes sense for us to discuss sort of what would be the most um, comfortable for this team to review the resumes with the sort of restrictions and guidelines that we have to follow from the public meeting laws. How does that yeah. sound? So typically what we do is once we start to get resumes, um, once or twice a week, we will um, go into the database, look at the resumes, download them and put them into a folder um, in SharePoint with the link. And I can share with you um, what that looks like right now, just so that everyone's on the same page. We have a folder in SharePoint. We have all our positions here. And there's one noted for the IEB director you would receive a link for just the IEB director. And it, if I click on it, here are all the resumes. Um, and these are all the resumes that are downloaded. And- um, Trippie, can, I, can I just suggest, because we're still in public session, can we not have that screen share? Yeah, okay, sure. Thank so thank you. So what we'll do is um, all the resumes will be in there. Now we can, do one of two things. Um, typically, we for managers, what we do is indicate meets requirements or does not meet requirements in those two folders. Uh, but in this instance, uh, the committee can take a look at all the resumes that they would like and make a determination at the next session with the names and all of the things um, that, you know, candidates that you want to move forward with. Uh, I can create a folder with the date saying November 15th, all the resumes that were last picked on November 15th, November 27th, which is the next Monday or whatever, I can say all the new resumes that came in as of then so that it might be easier for you to track which ones have been added. So there'd be a subfolder with the dates with when the resumes came in. Um, and, and which ones, it'll be easier to, to track which ones have been reviewed by this committee as either meets or not meets, should that be um, the desired approach? And yes, so you can review all of them within each of those weeks, but um, I think Mina will need to have you weigh in on sort of what the process is around. Then we can create another folder where we say, meets or the committee selected or the committee rejected to, to kind of manage that process. So I think that's what, that's for this subcommittee to discuss. So I think the first question that Troop D has posed for what I understand Troop D has posed is um, 
do, do we as a subcommittee want to review all of the resume, uh, resumes received and then um, review in a public meeting um, with, with preparation, of course, individual preparation, um, and uh, come to the meeting with a determination, individual determination to be discussed among the three of us as to whether or not the candidate meets or does not meet the criteria. So Madam Chair. Commissioner Hill. So here's where I'm going to, um, I'm throwing it out there, not because I agree or disagree with it, but I want it for discussion purposes um, since we're talking about the process. In the town that I reside, and, and Mina, I want you to help me out with this one because it's municipal. We have a process that has been used a few times called the MAST screening process, where the HR department will black out names, ages, everything. All they look at is, do they qualify under the um, job description? We leave it up to the HR to then forward to the um, subcommittee or whatever group is looking at it, up to 10, 12 resumes that they feel qualify, not knowing who they are, what they are, what they represent, whatever the case may be. And that has worked very well for our town in certain instances. And I'm just wondering what you think about that process. And more importantly, Dave, Trupti, and Mina, if you've heard of that process, is it a good one? And my only concern, I'm bringing it up, but I know it's used with a lot of companies as well, is our DEI um, we, you know, we care very deeply about the DEI piece of the, uh, our hiring, and I do too. Um, does that hurt us when it comes to the DEI part of our um, process? So throwing it out there for discussion purposes, but I have seen it work very, very well. Mm -hmm. Well, my first question uh, is to Troop D in response to your proposal, Commissioner Hill. Um, has the commission utilized that kind of a process previously? No. Okay. So we this have not. Um, I mean, I guess we're, ha we have not, uh, you know, uh, omitted the names or any of that information, uh, but we have, the only thing we've done is taken a look at the job description and looked at the minimum entrance requirements for the position and ensure that the candidate had those and then there would be a folder create meets the requirements. And we also have another folder that says does not meet the requirements. And we would, you know, if we wanted to go look at those, we'd still have the ability to do that. So that was the extent of the screening um, that we do. And then the managers reviews, typically reviews um, the meets requirements and then make a decision from there. So mm -hmm. that's been the process with us. Um, but, you know, we can work with what the committee is looking to do in the spirit of the direction they want to move with the search. Commissioner Hill, it sounds like what you're proposing is an anonymized screening process. Um, and I think, you know, to your point about um, casting a wide net, ensuring that we have diverse candidates in the pool, um, I think, you know, that anonymized process um, would assist there in um, not inserting any biases as to name or uh, uh, gender, um, for instance, um, into, that, into that process. I think the only way, however, because I think what you were suggesting is that HR screens those candidates after their name has been um, obliterated. I think the only way for that to be effective is if the committee 
screens for meets or does not meet because if HR is eliminating those names, I don't, they've already seen the names, right? They've already seen the names, the application, the resume is going right into the HR process. And so um, they have full access to all of that information, particularly where it comes in through, um, is it CEO, CEO the yeah. Commonwealth system? Okay. Employment opportunities. Okay. Um, so I don't know that there is a way for our HR team to fully review these for meets or does not meet in an anonymized way. I do think- I don't, the, this, HR, the HR would not, we would. Okay. So the HR division would high, black out the names and then forward, it, forward those resumes to the subcommittee and we would then review in an anonymized fashion. Yes, and they would also say they qualify, they don't qualify. So they, there's two things they're doing. After this committee has already given its review of meets versus does not meet. The HR would do the meets, do not meets, as well as black it out. Then it comes to us. So we're only looking at resumes that, in their opinion, um, qualified. But we're not going to know who they are because of the blackout process. So the problem that I have with that, just getting to your objective, is it's not really anonymized. If HR is blacking out the names, but then also determining whether the candidate meets or does not meet, HR isn't engaging in an anonymized process. Right? So that's why I think there needs to be a separation there. If, 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 so, if, so the way it worked in my town, they would do both, and then the subcommittee gets the resumes after they've already screened them. We're asking HR to do the screening for us. Yeah. No, I get that. I would, I, I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic proposal. Um, again, given, given the objective, uh, you're trying to, to accomplish here. Um, but I would slightly revise that process and just have, um, the committee, the subcommittee um, review for meets or does not meet. Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to add something to this. Chief Muldrew. I had a chance to speak with um, Benisla, who's on my team. And currently, this process is utilized, it's used at Southwest. And there's a packet of information she researched, and I can send that out to everyone. I found it interesting. And it supports DEI, where inherently you may think it doesn't, but in reality, it does. So what I could do is ask, what I could do is I could forward, Tripti, I'll forward it to you for your review as a research, or I'll, better yet, I'll have Benisma meet with you. Sure. Okay, okay, you can go there, go there. Is that okay, Mina? Yeah, that's that's certainly fine, and it's also okay to share that. Uh, it's not your opinions being shared; it's it's information, and it's okay. being shared okay. with everyone. It might need to be if it's something that can be made public. That's fine too. Um, it it can be put if if requested. So, yeah. To be clear, I, I like the approach. I just if we can work out that kink, um, I think you know if if it, because it sounds like Chief Muldrew, you're also in favor of that. Kind of a of an yeah, from what I see, yeah, it's just yeah, you know, I am. I but there are, but yes, it would like to to nail it down. But in theory, I think it's fair. Yeah, and so for me, for it to be truly effective um, and anonymized, I think that there needs to be a separation from individuals who are reviewing the applications and resumes and blacking out the names and making the initial determination as to whether the applicant meets or does not meet minimum criteria for the position. So if we can get to a place where um, our HR division is receiving, Troop D in particular, receiving those applications, um, blacking out the names, um, uploading them to SharePoint for the three of us to access, um, and then the three of us doing our initial review individually 
as to who we feel meets and does not meet the criteria. Um, and to be prepared to come to our next meeting to just fly through those names um, so that we all understand where each of us are coming from and which candidates we have grouped in which bucket. Does that make sense? So just for the record here, um, you know, the system that, you know, pulls all the resumes, um, so it's myself and my team who has access to it. Dave, of course, has access to it, but doesn't typically go into it, just so you know, and for those purposes, he won't. Um, what we can do is pull the names, anonymize them, and put them into I'm just mentally thinking of like, how am I going to categorize them with like a number or something, you know, um, have to keep a little key, I guess. Um, and then, then we can just put them into the folder and send the link. Um, I think that would work. Yeah. So, sounds like it. Mina, Mina here, the reason I'm bringing this up and, and it, and I think it's because of human nature and, and I, I can only speak for myself here. There's gonna be a, a few names that I'm gonna recognize. Mm -hmm. And human nature says to me, oh, I like that person. I like that person a lot. So I'm gonna put them in this aisle. Right. When they may or may not really be qualified. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to take that piece of this out of the process. And when I see what's happened in my, and I can only speak for Ipswich because I, they just actually hired a new uh, veteran service officer and they went through this process. And in the eyes of most, they hired a pretty good person. They had no clue who that person was until the subcommittee agreed, hey, we like this resume. We like what they have. To, and then they brought that person in for an interview. There was no um, prejudices, you know, because they know somebody. I mean, if that's what I'm trying to, at least for me, take out of the process, because I know how I am. And I and I know I'm going to see a couple of names and I'm going to be like, oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Commissioner Hill, I think your approach is an excellent one. I, I, I really like it. Um, again, you know, the anonymized review I think gets us to a point where we are not making decisions based on personal relationships or, you know, biases. Um, you know, I just, I, I think it enables us to truly review and evaluate what, who we might think would be the best candidate. Now that's only, that's only the first part of it. We've got to, you know, eventually get to the interview process should we determine that that's necessary. Can't imagine why we wouldn't, but um, I think it's it's a it's an excellent suggestion. Buki, you do you feel comfortable that this could be done if this is what we choose to do? Yeah, yeah. So um, it, what we'll do the process isn't um, all that different. We'll have to just I think I'm just trying to think about some of them are in a PDF and how to remove the names and and we'll, we'll have to kind of work that out, but. You know, I'm sure we can do that. Um, and I, I guess while I have this team here, um, are we thinking that we put it all in one link and, and have it there? Is that work for you? Do you want me to create it by week so you can manage which ones you've gone through and which ones are open for you? I think um, if, they're, if they're anonymized, I think you have to create multiple folders so that we can keep track of the ones that we've reviewed already. Yeah, so I, I, at least I'm thinking out loud right now, but I would have a numbering system where it'd be one, two, three, four, five. And then I, if I left off at five, the next week I'll start with six, seven, eight. And yes, that's what I would envision. So it, we could probably leave it in one folder. Um, if that's and by the, the way, case, give, numbers, Dave, yeah. give Dave Mackey a, a call. Um, he knows PDF stuff and okay. he, helped, he helped me with something. We okay. actually have a program at the Mass Gaming Commission yep. that um, can help you edit a PDF. Okay. 
and I just want to be clear. That I Dave, can help Dave, you with that. We don't need to, but we don't need to call Dave Mackey for exactly. that. Exactly. I, I somehow think our IT department can give me a hand with that. But yeah, sure. Oh, um, am, am I getting my? I'm getting my names mixed up. Um, from Dave from uh, finance. Um, I said Mackey. Dave, it's okay. Dave, okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Okay. I, I can I will speak definitely on tap happen. his shoulder. I will definitely tap his shoulder for that. Okay. One, for sure. Um, Commissioner, if, if I may, just two things, one substantive, one not. The not first is I, 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 Dave Mackey, my colleague, has many good qualities. Uh, tech support would not be one I'd put up there. So I, I was sort of chuckling at that suggestion. I think he would, too. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I think just to cover it, I see no legal problems with anything that you mentioned. Um, the, as I mentioned at the outset from the iterative process, as you get closer to deciding on finalists, you may you know, want to revisit whether at that point you want to look at the names. One of the things that we have seen in screening processes that does matter um, is for very public agencies uh, like yours. Um, sometimes at the very end, you at least want to know the name in case there are sort of any uh, red flags or credibility issues that uh, may not appear in the resume, may not appear in the application materials, but would be publicly known. So other than that, I think you're you're in the clear legally. Yeah, I think um, yeah, if I had my way, um, we, we would be re uh, interviewing uh, finalists to, to pass on to the full commission. And so in that case, for sure, we need to understand uh, who they are by revealing their name at that point. Well, at at that point, we would. I'm sorry, David. No, go on. I, I can wait. I'm done. I, I agree oh, okay. with you. Yeah. The process, as human resources identifies those and is screening those, what needs to be done to document those that have been screened out and why? And what does that, is that a, from a standpoint of folks, someone coming back saying, well, I applied and I never heard from anyone or what? What is going to be, what's our responsibility, um, Mina, in regards to those who are not washed in that? Can, can I respond to that, uh, Chief Muldrew, um, uh, first? Um, you know, I think that our review of the applicants, um, at least where we are um, separating them out into the two buckets, meets, does not meet. That's a public process. And while we don't need to get into great detail as to um, why we screen them out, I think it would be enough to have a brief discussion about each candidate with an, a short explanation as to why we've deemed them here or there. Um, that being said, I think that um, if any one of us makes the case that someone meets the criteria, um, I would like to see uh, us move forward by consensus, um, you know, and, and, and have that individual advance sort of to the next step in the pool. M mind you, we'll be receiving resumes throughout this process because what I don't think I wanna do is wait until the application uh, period closes before we start to meet to go through those candidates. I want to do that on a somewhat rolling basis. So I would imagine that there are um, many, there will be many uh, rounds, if you will, right? As you know, we're getting these resumes uploaded weekly, once or twice, I think Troop said. So um, again, we will have a somewhat public process about why each of us feels how we feel about a candidate. Um, but again, I just, where there is at least one of us who thinks that that person should advance to sort of the next round, um, and that next round might just be until we get the next set, right? They might be knocked out by that point, by, you know, the additional pool. Um, so does that help a little bit? Chief Muldrew, in the way you're thinking of how we, we're going to review this and what what we need to, to, to how we justify our decision-making 
Now that's not speak. That's on that's on the public meeting process. I'll leave it to to Troop D. Um, in large part, I guess, just based on how we've handled these um, rejections, if you will, historically, right? In terms of commission communication back to them. But just at least from my perspective, the process that I just laid out is how I see um, us managing just that piece of the review. Is our process is typically to send an email indicating we've identified other candidates, which in fact is um, where we are in the process, right? Um, who meets closer in line with the position, so we notify the candidates in that way. Uh, it's a no, so they it, it wouldn't be that they would never hear from us or uh, anything like that. We what we do is we post the position. The system sends out a note that, you know, your position has been submitted, your application has been submitted. Uh, and then if we decide to move forward, we'd reach out to the candidate. If we decided that we're not moving forward with this pool of candidate or a, a grouping of folks, we would then send out a note from our system, which would then document that we have notified them that we are not moving forward at this time. Yeah, we're not proposing to do anything different relative right. on, on the on the HR, the back end HR side of things than we would typically do um, mm -hmm. in response to any other job posting um, that any candidate has applied for. Um, Attorney Macarius, do you have any questions or take issue with Ed, the, the process as I've laid out? No, not, not, not at out? all. No. I think it's fine. Absolutely. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no problem. Yeah, I just want to have the comfort level for this group to know that, you know, it's not that we're never going to respond to these folks and let them know. Um, so we do do that. It's part of our process for all positions. And we do the same for this position. I have a question, though. Um, you know, if if this committee is reviewing candidates for a determination whether they meet or do not meet the criteria. Um, if there is, can't imagine this would be the case, but if there's a disagreement <laughs> among the three of us that a candidate does not meet the criteria, how should we handle that? I say to you, Madam Chair, I move that, and then there would be a second, <laughs> and then there would be a vote. There we go. And that's, okay. unless Mina, you tell me different, that's the process. No, well, that's straightforward enough. I, I think that that's perfectly fine. Or, you know, at, at, if there's really uh, uncertainty, you know, there's nothing wrong with having somebody in a, in a maybe pile. Um, because remember at the end of the day, you're only advancing folks. And so if you end up with Five, five. Everybody agrees they qualify, and four maybes. The maybes may get weeded out that way. You never, you know. I, that's why I say it's an iterative process, um, and you don't have to decide now how you will decide that. That's a good I, I, can, I can only speak uh, for myself, Nikisha, when I tell you this is probably my tenth hiring, either through um, the state or through municipality. And when you start seeing these resumes. The cream of the crops rises right to the top. Oh, absolutely. And I do have tons of experience hiring, just not in yep. such a public process as this. So a um, little bit of an adjustment there for sure. And where I'm typically a solo decision maker, that is not the case in this forum. So um, I, I have found that in all the committees I've been on, agreement has been reached pretty easily. And quickly. Good. Who wouldn't agree with you, Commissioner Hill? Oh, there's been many who have disagreed with me. <laughs> All right. Um, Trupti, anything else? So you should feel free, Mina, correct me if I'm wrong, um, to communicate with the subcommittee members um, as frequently as necessary, right? So when you Develop your numbering system, right? Your index so that you can keep track of, you know, who these anonymous candidates are. Um, and you upload the resumes to the SharePoint drive. You should feel free to send us an email letting us know what your system is and 
that you've uploaded them and and that they're ready for us to review individually, right? Yes. Um, so I think my intentions are to send one email with the links of the items that you need to, um, you know, where you, where the resumes will be, where the spreadsheet with the uh, job postings um, and the status will be, and then you can continue to go back to it at any time. Um, and if there's any, you know, uh, Monday comes around and we've had a chance to get through the resumes and there's been an updated folder, I would just send an email as I sent out to the subcommittee in the past. Please do not reply to all. I um, want to let you know the resume has been updated. Please go ahead to your link and um, that way you have some information as to there's another folder added or something like that. Okay. Any sense on the timing of when you would post the position with those other organizations? You have a healthy list now that's grown in just the past hour. Um, yeah. any, any sense of when you will be posting those or when you would have completed posting with those? So um, in some instances, it depends on the job sites where they have to post for us once we go through the process of the payment and all of those things. In some instances, we're able to do it. So I think that now that one of the things we were holding off on was, uh, you know, sharing with this group the places that we've identified and the total cost associated with it um, and wanted to make sure that the committee had a comfort level with it um, before moving forward as well. And um, then I'll go ahead and add these others. So hoping, I would say throughout this week and early part of next week, um, most of the stuff, most of the, um, the position will be posted at most of the sites. Sounds good. Not to be bad. honest, I didn't even pay attention to the price tag. Um, I mean, I, I, I did, but I didn't make that my focus. Um, yeah. I, I want to say the total was about $4,000. Is that accurate? That's right. Very good, yeah. Okay. There's right. one that was particularly expensive at $2,500 for- Lawyers Weekly. Weekly. Yep. And that's um, standard. Yeah, so I wanted to just make sure I flagged that because that's outside of our typical- you know, range of postings. Um, so I want to make sure everyone was aware of it and on, um, you know, comfortable with moving forward with that. I'm certainly okay with it as long as we have budgeted for it. Brad, you're shaking your head. You know how I am, uh, Madam <laughs> Chair. So with that said, Madam Chair, we now have 20 resumes already before us. And we're gonna be asking a lot of our HR department and. I'm actually going to be a, a, a harsh in what I'm about to say. Uh, I want to see that this process moves forward rather quickly. I think we're a little behind the eight ball already. Um, it's been months since our IEB director left. And I know we have an interim in there who's doing a great job. Um, but her contract, if you will, you know, it's set to expire. And although I'm sure she would not mind having us extend that, we need to move this forward very quickly. So I heard the word that we would be getting these weekly. I need to see these daily. And I'm asking you, Madam Chair, as we start processing these resumes, we really do need to meet more frequently than maybe once a week. Because uh, if we keep going at, at the rate, you know, with 20 resumes, and then we get another 20, we're not going to hire someone till February or March. And I'm not keen on that. So I'm asking the committee and HR, can we almost meet every other day, every third day, and not weekly? Are people uncomfortable with that? Because it seems to me this process, by no fault of our own, by the way, is taking a long time. Well, so I have to say, Commissioner Hill, I take strong issue with your comment that we're behind the eight ball and the process is taking a long time. Um, I understand our um, interim IEB director has been in place for a couple of months, a few months now. Um, you know, but but in terms of this subcommittee's work. We've just really gotten started. And I think we are off to a good start. I think we've gotten a lot of things done in a fairly short amount of time. 
Um, it's my commitment to keep this train moving. Um, I hear your desire and I share that desire uh, to have this process wrapped up in served to the full commission sooner rather than later. Um, but I think that um, there are six of us um, and that means there are six schedules that we have to contend with. We also have um, the matter of minute taking and review and public meetings and public meeting prep. And so it's my intent to keep this process moving um, as much as is reasonable. But I do think to your point, we are asking a lot of HR. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll have Trupti respond to, you know, to, to, to um, the request to have these resumes forwarded daily. Um, but just in terms of our meeting schedule, um, yeah, let's try to get a standing cadence so that, you know, we can, we, we will know um, that every Wednesday or it can't be Wednesday at 10 because we have agenda setting, but we will, we will create a, a standing schedule, standing meeting schedule from, from here on out for a couple of weeks. And, and, and if we don't need the meetings, we can cancel them or not even post them. Um, but I do think that's the, I think that's the, the challenge is coordinating all of our schedules. We have A and K here. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult, but I'm committed to, to working through it in that way. Well, again, I appreciate your comments as I always do. And as I said in my remarks, you know, make no mistake about it. It's not the subcommittee that, you know, has caused a, what I perceive to be a delay. It's just the process itself. Yeah. And, and I'm frustrated by it. And I'm just putting it out there to you and to my fellow member, uh, Chief Muldrew, that I hope we can move this a little quicker than, in my opinion, it has been moving. Not because of us, yeah. because of the process. I hear you. You might be surprised. It, first, I'm going to predict it's going to be well before February before we're making a determination here. Um, but you might be pleasantly surprised in terms of how fast we can move through. Uh, before I promise anything, though, Trupti has to respond. <laughs> sure thing. We'll make it happen. So <laughs> if, um, if you need us to uh, get those on a daily basis, we'll kind of fit that into our schedule. And I think if we do manage it on a day, daily basis, um, it, 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 there'll be fewer numbers to come through. So I think we're going to get over the first push of the 20 that we have and um, start redacting those um, names and information. So that might take maybe a, a, a day or two. So we'll get those to you um, and then um, we'll keep you posted and um, get the things out as we can. Meanwhile, Commissioner Hill, I'm going to work with Troop D to get our next meeting scheduled. Next and week next week will be tough because we have the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, let's course, shoot for yeah. the week after that. I, I always push for the extreme Troop D. And when I say every day, if it's every second or third day, but I think once a week is too long. Okay. So let me be clear. It's just shorter than a week. Hey, that's fair. At least I know what you're looking for. Um, so I can, you know, sometimes managers don't have time to take a look at them. So they ask for them in that way. So we, we try to work with like, what their needs are. So no problem. We can make it I, happen. I hate to say, but I'm supposed to be at another meeting. And I think that's what that phone call was. No worries. Um, but thank you for your comments, Commissioner Hill. Much appreciated. Um, Chief Muldrew, if there's nothing else, are you ready to wrap up? I'm ready to wrap up, Madam Chair. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Madam Chair. I think we need them uh, to adjourn uh, by we do. Okay, yep. Nina, are you all set? Okay, I am. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you so much, Troop D. Of course, Anita. Thank you. Move Bye -bye. to adjourn. I second the motion. Thank you. I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Hill. Aye. And Chief Muldrew. Aye. And I am also an aye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.